Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to run a basic session in Control Room A using the SSL Duality Console. One thing to keep in mind is that this is a very versatile console and there are many different ways to set it up. So today I'll show you the most common one, the split channel mode. Here's how to set it up. Using the buttons corresponding to the screen, press SSL, then select Project and Console Clear. Then push Select. Next, choose the mode you want, in this case, Split Channel. Select it. Then push TR or Total Recall. Select a recall setting and push Set All twice. The board will be configured to Split Channel mode and all the fader positions will be reset. Pretty cool, huh? Lastly, push the SSL button again to get out of the recall menu. Now it's time to configure Pro Tools. For that, open the software, create a new session, and select the right beat depth and sample rate. Also make sure you have CRA as the I.O. settings, and select Prompt for Location. Click on Create. Pro Tools will ask you where you want to save the session. Since this is a shared facility, it is strongly recommended that you create the session in your external hard drive. Now connect your microphones to the wall panels and take note on the inputs you are using. In this example, A1 through A3. The XLR connections labeled A1 through A48 are automatically routed to the channels 1 through 48 on the board so no patching is required. However, if I have a microphone connected to A17, for example, and want to send it to channel 1 on the console, you have to patch the signal from mic line A17 into channel input 1. Let's go ahead and set up a headphone box as well. Just grab an Ethernet cable and connect any of the Ethernet connections labeled as D to the input, not output, of an Avion box. The next step is to send phantom power to the microphones that need it. In this case, I'm using a condenser, a dynamic, and a ribbon microphone. So I'll send phantom power to just the condenser mic. To do that, select the channel that the condenser mic is connected to. In this case, channel 1. The channel number will be indicated on the central routing panel of the board. Then push the 48 volt button. Now we are ready to create and route the tracks in Pro Tools. In this example, I have three microphones, so I'll create three tracks, assign the corresponding inputs or channels of the board my microphones are connected to, and assign the outputs as the same numbers as the inputs. This will route the signal from the preamplifiers to Pro Tools, and then from Pro Tools to the faders on the board. Now, there's one very important button that defines if the faders are controlling the analog portion of the board or if they're just controlling Pro Tools. It is this button with the up and down arrows, also called Console Focus button, located in the Master Control panel. When not lit, the faders will control Pro Tools. When blue, they control the analog channels of the board. And it's time for a sound check. For that, I will arm the tracks in Pro Tools and see if the signals are coming through. Next, I'll adjust the preamp levels. The preamps on the board have two stages, an input gain knob, red, and an output trim knob, black. As a rule of thumb, start with the output trim at noon position. While looking at Pro Tools, turn the red knob up until you have a good reading and are not clipping. You can also drive the preamp harder for creative distortion by cranking up the red knob and compensating by turning the black knob down so the signal doesn't clip in Pro Tools. Next, I will adjust the levels of that track in the control room. For that, I will set the console focus button to blue and bring up the faders until I can hear the tracks. If the faders are up and you still can't hear anything, check if the monitor level is up and if the monitor source is set to stereo mix. You can also switch the sets of speakers by pressing these buttons. Now we just need to provide the artist with a headphone mix. Again, there are many different ways to create headphone mixes using the SSL, but I'll show you how to do it using Pro Tools Sense. There are usually three things that the performers will need on their headphones. 
the talkback signal so they can hear the engineer in the control room themselves and the other stuff such as previously recorded tracks, click track and the other musicians. Let's start with the talkback signal. Find the talkback out connection on the patch bay and patch it to one of the channels of the Avium monitoring system available on the patch bay through connections labeled CMR tie lines from AV18 101 through 110. If I patch it to connection 101, the talkback signal will be sent to channel 1 on the Avion box. If I patch it to 102, it will be routed to channel 2, and so on. Now, whenever the external talkback button is pushed, the talkback signal will be routed to channel 1 on the Avion box. Hey Manny, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. Now let's create a Pro Tool Sans so the musicians can hear themselves. Go to the track and click on the Sans slot and choose an available physical output, not a bus. I recommend picking higher numbers for headphone Sans and leave the lower outputs free just in case you need to route them to the console later on. In this example, I will use out 31. Make sure it's pre-fader and the level is set to zero. Now I will patch out 31 to CMR tie line 102 so it is available on channel 2 of the headphone box. I will copy the sand so kick, snare and overhead mics are on the same channel on the Avion box. If I need to send a different track to the headphones and want it on a separate channel on the Avion box, I just need to follow the same steps, but this time using a Pro Tools sand of a different number and patching it to a different channel on the Avion box. As an example, I'll go ahead and set up a click track. First, I'll assign the output of the click track as out 4, so I can hear it in the control room via fader 4 on the console. Then I'll create a sand for the artist's headphone mix. In this example, I'm using out 32 and patching it to CMR tie lines 103. Now the click track is on channel 3 of the Avium unit. Finally, a few considerations about the headphone box. First, make sure that all knobs are at a good starting position. I recommend having the treble bass knobs at noon and the master level at 2 o'clock. I also like to start with all channels up at about 70%, just to make sure all signals are going through and then the performers can adjust the levels according to what they need. Also, make sure channels 11 through 16 are muted, as these are routed to the other control rooms in Krieger, which might be in use during your session. Lastly, if two channels are linked, such as channels 1, 2 in this example, and you'd like them to be unlinked, just go to the CMR room and switch the stereo link option off. And that's it! I know this may be a lot of information, but I promise it will get more intuitive as you get more experienced on the SSL. If you have any questions, reach out to the studio manager, work studies, or faculty members, and we'll be glad to assist you. Have a great session, and see you on the next video.